What's up guys, the fight night card just ended and really good card, good performances all around from prospects like Dusko Todorovic and Kyler Phillips to former champions in Holly Holm GDR and Carlos Condit, right? Them showing some new wrinkles into their game at their older ages. Holly Holm was what, 38 years old? GDR and Carlos Condit are around the same age as well. They showed good wrestling that we've never seen before, good submissions that we've never seen before, and a newfound striking style that we have never seen before. I love it when these old school fighters just evolve and bring new wrinkles into the game. No pun intended. Intended. But let's look right into that main event. Holly Holm dominates Irene Aldana for five rounds. It was a rinse and repeat of the first round. I mean, every single round was pretty much the same thing. Each round, Holly Holm got one takedown. Just one. Each round, it was a cat and mouse game, matador and bold, puppet and puppeteer pretty much, where Holm was moving away, right arm extended to intercept the left hook, and looking for the right hand of Aldana, counter her, intercept her with the left hand, and then went to side kicks and double leg takedowns once Aldana was starting to get the feeling out of the timing. And Aldana really never made adjustments besides just, I'm going to punch harder and I'm going to punch faster because her coaches were also telling her to just move forward. You got to move forward, which is not really what she wanted to hear, or at least she needed to hear because... That's what she was doing the entire fight and she was losing because of it. She was chasing Holly Holm the entire fight. Chasing the outside foot, lining up the right hand and escaping the left side of Holly Holm just to be on the safe side. And Holm was just making her fall into the left hand side kick and double leg takedown the entire fight. And Aldana never adjusted. She never fixed the mistakes. She never addressed anything and all she really had to do was move to her right. If she simply just moved to her right instead of moving to her left, the fight would have been completely different this is a game of inches right and those inches she didn't take to the right costed her so many options to follow up on some openings that she could have possibly found and the other thing are feints right feints would have been huge holly Holm bites on a lot of feints right just historically looking at it if aldana was chasing the outside foot and all she would do is throw feints at holly Holm to bring out that left hand or sidekick aldana now can control some of the exchanges because she was controlling none of it again she was like the puppet and Holm was playing her the entire time, playing Ring Around the Rosie with her in the center of the octagon, and Aldana rarely ever found an opening, so she needed to control it a little bit. Holm was controlling the fight, and because of that, she was controlling the action. She was controlling when it started and when it ended. Feints would have been a huge help for Aldana in this one, but at the end of the day, man, just domination from Holly Holm showed her experience. Her takedowns were really nice in this one. Her initial double leg, that blast double that she tried to counter with, it wasn't the most powerful, right? She didn't finish it that well, but she used it as an entry to get into the clinch, body lock her way up, and trip out at Rena Aldana, which her trips were actually pretty nice. And her control on the ground after they crashed to the mat was pretty nice as well. The only thing I didn't like from Holly Holm was when she did take Aldana to the ground, she would always post with one arm. And that is not what you want to see because if she's fighting a high-level grappler where she's going to want to be able to dominate or control the ground game, she could possibly get into some submission into an armbar or the grappler is going to be able to break the grip mid-transition. And that is a concerning thing for Holly Holm going into her future when you look at her wrestling, but she is getting better there 100%. Her striking look kind of similar to her past fights, right? Whenever you engage and chase down Holly Holm, she's always been a good counter puncher as well as an intercepting puncher. When she's leading the fight, when she's moving forward and pressuring and all that stuff, that's when she tends not to be the same kind of uh, effective striker. So her striking really looked the same, to be honest, but her wrestling confidence in her wrestling and control was a lot better. Aldana was, I mean, according to the commentators, one of the best anti-wrestlers or had some of the best takedown defense in the entire division. Yeah, Holly Holm took her down in every single round. That is great looking forward into Holly Holm's future. And who these two should be fighting next? Holly Holm versus GDR too. That fight has to happen next. Winner gets title shot. As for Aldana, you could do her versus Aspen Ladd or Raquel Pennington. I think those make some good sense. Or she could fight Juliana Pena, right? Who's also coming off a loss tonight. And then we go to the co-main event. Carlos Felipe defeats Jorgon De Castro by decision. 230-27, 129-28. Not the funnest fight. Felipe was trying to do stuff. He was trying to make it a fight. He was trying to bring on the action. He hurt De Castro in the third round. But the Castro was extremely defensive. I mean, super defensive. Stayed in his shell for most of the fight and looking to just clinch up against the cage for a break in the action. And I'm glad the ref just kept breaking it up. Whenever you clinch up, you got to see how it plays out. But going to the same thing just to break up the action and not really doing anything in the clinch ever, whenever he got there, I think it did warrant consecutive breakups from the referee. I mean, the referee knew what was going to happen. He knows what Jorgen de Castro is doing. And the ref was very assertive. And the fans seemed to be a little bit split. I personally did like it looking at how the fight was playing out. 
and seeing that DeCastro, even with the limited amount of time he had in the clinch, he didn't really do anything at all. Like, he just hung on against the cage, and Felipe was taunting him, talking to everybody. I mean, when your opponent's talking to the commentators and the ref and the camera while you're holding him up against the cage, that tells you something, you know? But I do agree that it is up to Felipe to get out of the clinch. Don't always look for the ref to disengage it because not every ref is going to disengage it. He was pretty fortunate that the ref was breaking up for him, but I still think he would have won the fight. Felipe had very good hand speed, decent boxing skills as well, and Jorgon DeCastro didn't really bring anything to the game. And I agree with uh, Dan Hardy. Carlos Felipe versus Taito Ivasa would be an excellent fight. And then we go to Jermaine Duranemi submitting Juliana Pena in the third round. And yes, you heard that right. This is not a parallel universe where Jermaine Duranemi is like a third degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or something. She gets that high elbow guillotine with a quickness, snatched it on so fast. It made her literally go limp. I mean, it was a tight squeeze, but Jermaine has those long arms, man. She was able to get it right in there and stretch it out and squeeze, man. But it was one and one going into the third round, which is very interesting. G GDR won the first round. She dropped Juliana Pena with a sneaky right counter shot behind the ear, and she was very patient. She wasn't super aggressive or anything like that. She looked extremely composed and very powerful, and Pena was respecting it. Second round comes in, and Pena starts the round with a flurry, and it caught GDR by surprise, right? GDR seemed to be a little bit flustered by the immediate blitz. Right, and that's where Penny was starting to attempt with takedowns, and GDR shows better takedown defense. I mean, she was fighting it off pretty well, and Penny is a good, aggressive wrestler. GDR shows some really good control off her back. I mean, good butterfly hooks and all that. She was always good defensively against Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You know, when it gets to the ground, she's good at defending herself. But getting to the ground, that bridge there, is where she has a hard time not crossing, right? She sees the bridge, and she just has to walk past it into the ground game. And I do have to look back at how it reversed. I forgot how GDR got on top, where she almost got a Von Flu choke on Pena. So Pena went in for the guillotine and she was holding on to it. GDR was able to get into side control, which is pretty crazy to think about. And she started to go for the Von Flu choke. And you could see on Pena's face. I mean, it looks so tight. And GDR went into for an arm triangle. So I don't know if she did the Von Flu on purpose or she was setting up for the arm triangle, right? It looked like she was setting up for the arm triangle. But people have to know now the Von Flu choke is a real thing do not hold on to the neck when they pass into side control because now your guillotine or headlock is not going to be used against you right it can even be trapped against you where you cannot get your hand out and you have to hold on to it fight goes into the third round gdr looks pretty good penny is throwing out some more flurries and stuff like that penny gets it up against the cage and gdr snatches onto that high elbow guillotine Dustin Poirier would be proud, but he goes in for the arm and guillotine all the time. Man, I love the high elbow guillotine. It's probably my favorite submission to ever pull off. It's just so tight when you get onto it. There's so much leverage you have too. Just a snake-like submission. And that leaves GDR as the number one contender, right? I mean, she had a finish against Juliana Penny where Holly Holm dominated but didn't get a finish. And she would have to fight Holly Holm next. And I'm going to have to say, if Jermaine Durandamy has some solid takedown defense, I don't think anybody beats her. I don't even think Amanda Nunes would beat her, to be honest. I don't think Valentina Shevchenko would beat her either, right? She is probably the best striker in women's MMA, probably ever. And she showed in the Amanda Nunes fight, she was definitely the superior striker. She just had to deal with the power a little bit in the first round. After feeling the power and getting used to the timing and all that stuff, she had the striking completely in control. It was just the wrestling from Nunes that got to her. And Juliana Pena versus Erin Aldana would be an interesting fight as well. They'd probably get matched up. Kyler Phillips put on an amazing performance, getting a second round TKO against Cameron Else. Really good athletic movement in the beginning. Good kicks and all that stuff. He was moving away or like retreating from the strikes a little bit too much. I'd like to see him stick in the pocket a little bit more, but I understand moving away like that is going to allow him to set up for kicks more. He's a lot more athletic than his opponent. Got a good double leg takedown in the first round too, and that made Cameron respect it. And he was delivering really good power into his body shots. I mean, that was straight right to the body. He really uses his legs into it, which a lot of fighters don't do. But man, when he gets it to the ground, his control is phenomenal. He was starting to go for the finish a little bit too early, and he was giving up control. And like they always say, man, position over submission, right? You want your position first before you really dive in for the finish. When he started to do that, he got the back eventually, able to TKO Cameron Else. Great performance by Kyler Phillips. He's going to be a real problem, man. Dusko Todorovic had an amazing TKO over Dequan Townsend. First round was a little bit dicey. Dusko was leaning in with a lot of left hooks, and it was getting a little bit obvious for Townsend, but... The thing about Townsend was he didn't really make Todorovic respect him that much. Besides when they start to exchange in the pocket and they slowly separate into far range exchanges, 
Townsend really needed that jab, man, because if he kept a constant jab on Todorovic, Dusko would not be able to engage him on the on the front line, on that center line. He wouldn't be able to barge in the way he was, right? Dusko would have to find another entry because all he was really doing to defend strikes was using head movement, right? His blocking was okay, but his parry was non-existent. Just constant jabs, and that would have really disrupted a lot what Dusko was trying to do. And also, given that Townsend has a major reach advantage, he also has a hand speed advantage. And the jabs will also allow Townsend to feel out where the takedown is going to come from in case Dusko wants to enter that way. But because he wasn't throwing it out there that much, Dusko was able to get in on him and put the hands on him, put the fire on him at the end of the first round, just putting power shots into all of his flurries. And Townsend showed a chin. He really didn't look like he was that much out of it, taking all of that punishment. But once that double leg came in, once Dusko was able to get it to the ground, there was another world of punishment able to get the TKO in half the time that he had in the first round. He dealt even more damage on the ground than he did standing in half the time. Such a well-rounded fighter, man. There was a reason he was one of the biggest prospects in Europe a couple of years ago after he defeated Michel Pereira. But the fact that he's so young and so well-rounded with good cardio, good power, good fight IQ to switch up the game on the opponent, this guy's going to be a problem for a lot of fighters in the future. And then, of course, Carlos Condit defeats Court McGee by decision. He gets back in the winning column after making some great adjustments, great evolution in his career. So he hasn't fought in like two years or something, a year and a half. And he came back with a slightly different style, some really good, some really good modifications to his striking game. More of a sideways stance, more solid and calculated move rather than just a constant bouncy movement all over the place he showed more stutter stabs a lot more feints than ever before in the past he used to just throw strikes out there right just like tech and combinations with no feints before now he's throwing a lot of feints and i'm glad to see that for him more pole counters than ever before he was throwing a left hand almost like a sniper just amazing evolution man and that i think it was a switch in right uppercut that he landed on court mcgee at the end of the first round that dropped him this is a dangerous carl's condit man i would love to see him fight like a nick diaz or even a tyron woodley rematch i know a lot of people like to see that again still to this day a lot of people don't feel right about how that fight ended so if they do the rematch that would be excellent i would love to see it so that's the end of the video guys it is pretty late it's what six in the morning uh i hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you didn't make sure to thumbs up if you enjoyed my content make sure to subscribe my podcast is going to be my next video and it will be live for the first time it's gonna be a little bit different for me i'm gonna to try to get used to it i'm gonna see how it works out and that should be up anywhere from monday to thursday i'll keep you guys updated i'll let you guys know what day and what time i'm gonna go live and i'll see you guys then